Hello, hello. How's it going? It's Monday and we are here for our Sunday Stampin' Dreams card demonstration. <laughs> yes, I am one day late and I so appreciate everyone's understanding for me postponing uh, by one day. Um, my younger daughter who is in med school took a little break and I made a surprise visit uh, to come see her mama and I so needed that. I haven't seen her for a couple of weeks and I know she has been super super busy with her nose in the books and studying for those really um, terrible med test <laughs> but um, yeah it was something that I desperately needed and she did too as well so she was needing a break and she was needing her mama and I was happy to comply so so welcome welcome everybody so glad to have you here I am so excited the more I play with this curvy uh, celebrations bundle the variety bundle now there are two stamp sets and a set of dies and paper that go with this uh, the more the ideas keep coming out of my head so I uh, decided to uh, kind of do a throwback on a card that I had made oh gosh quite a number of years ago I don't even remember what stamp set it was but I thought oh, I'm gonna do like a little throwback Thursday uh, even though it's not Thursday, and remake the card a little bit differently than I had originally done. But I'm kind of in the same color scheme that my original uh, inspiration is coming from. But uh, this Curvy Celebrations bundle, if you have not gotten it, you need it. Um, the images are really super cute and it kind of hits a gamut of different holidays and seasons not only is it for fall but you can use it for every day christmas valentine's when it comes around but it is a set that is going to really help you um, venture out and use it outside of its original boundaries so on that note oh, I'm watching a squirrel climb up the tree I don't have Sophie here today so um, otherwise she would be barking thank heavens <laughs> she's not otherwise it would be a disruption for sure but I can't wait to share with you what I have got so let's flip us around and get started <laughs> All right, so we have this Curvy Celebrations release, early release. You will see these in our upcoming January through June catalog. And so here's a couple of different samples, but there are two stamp sets and a set of dies and papers. And you can do the entire variety bundle with one item number or you can just select what you want. With exception of this one, the stamp set and the dies is only available as a bundle right now. We're not able to uh, separate the two and purchase one or the other. They come as a bundle and um, you can purchase the Christmas one separately and the paper separately as well. So details are on my blog at stampandreams.com if you um, want to read up on it and see the images a lot more closer as well. So here are the stamp sets. I'm going to play with the curvy Christmas one today. Now last week I showed off the quite curvy using uh, one of the sentiments here with a birthday card, but uh, the dies are also something that are kind of universal. You can use them with the stamp sets or you can use them as a solo. They don't have to be uh, played with together. You could use these little images for uh, some other stamp set, maybe just with a, a different set of sentiments or a floral image or however, you know, with your punches as well. But otherwise, these do coordinate with different images that are part of these stamp sets. So I'm super excited, but I am not playing with the paper today. Uh, I'll save that for another session. I just want to get ideas um, for a Christmas card out that um, I have rolling in my head and thought that I would share with you where my initial inspiration came from. So years ago I had this as one of my class cards um, for my in-person classes 
and it was using this uh, particular uh, fern image and our stamparatus. And I just loved it. I came across it as I was kind of going through a bunch of old cards that I have um, kept because with every single card class, I have kept every original. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could definitely do this with the Kirby Christmas stamp set. And we're looking at this particular image right here. I thought about doing um, this particular image, but it didn't call my name as far as using uh, shaded spruce. Or um, to me, it was more of a cherry cobbler, real red. And I wanted to kind of stay with the same color scheme as this one. This one is using, oh my gosh, I think it's always artichoke. Um, knowing the stamp that I have on the back, I think it's always artichoke and cherry cobbler. And we had some really pretty ribbons at the time using some gold glimmer paper, did some gold embossing on there. So on that note with this one, this is what I came up with. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. And this is the shaded spruce. And look how pretty it is with our cherry cobbler. I really like the more, um, I don't know, it's more of a vibrant green than uh, the mossy meadow that I have in here and um, cherry cobbler. So you'll have to tell me which version of green you like, even though always artichoke doesn't exist anymore. It retired, but this is the shaded spruce and I just love how refreshing it is. It's just more of a modern look. And I am using uh, Sahara Sand because with the Designer Series paper, and this is where I got my color uh, choices on the Designer Series paper, those are the colors that are uh, incorporated into these patterns right there. So that's where my color palette stems from. Sahara Sand with Cherry Cobbler background using the shaded spruce as my ink and then the sentiment is using Cherry Cobbler as well. Got a little bit of a um, rustic element and I'll show you how I came up with these fibers and a little bit of a technique using our pearls. So I, and this is a uh, champagne foil. I am into the champagne foil right now, uh, more so than the silver or the gold or the bronze. Um, champagne is just more of a subtle, uh, kind of a dirty silver, I guess. Um, but I just love the, the champagne look on that. And this card is not your traditional four and a quarter by five and a half. It is a four and a quarter square. So I start out with an eight and a half inch by 11 sheet of cardstock and then I cut it to four and a quarter and then I score it at four and a quarter as well. So this is my eight and a half right here and I scored at four and a quarter. So it is a square and it will fit in our traditional envelopes. So yeah, just a little fun um, design and a different um, makeup of the overall size. Now my original size and inspiration was five and a quarter inches. And so that would mean you'd have to have a 10 and a half inch uh, sheet of cardstock, which, you know, 11 inches, I just cut off of a half of inch and made that oversized size and made my own envelopes to fit that. But this one will fit into our regular Whisper White and I'm, I'm mentioning Whisper White because that's the paper that I used and will fit in there. So beautiful, love, love, love. So thank you so much for everyone popping on. It's good to see some of you. I haven't seen some of you in a while. It's great that you're back. So we are gonna get started with the ingredients. And I said our card base is Sahara Sand and it measures eight and a half by five and a quarter and it's scored at four and a quarter as well all right the cherry cobbler layer is a square at three and seven eighths inch square that's our mat the whisper white layer is three and three quarters square 
All right, then you're gonna need, uh, for the sentiment, I have a piece of Whisper White at three and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. And then I already die cut my champagne uh, scallop circle and um, I'll put those aside because I'm going to show off something there. But the circle die used for that is this one right here. So if you have kept your circles in the same pattern that they came in the pre-packaging, that is the one that I use for the scallop right there. All right. All right. So next up, we are going to go ahead and... Let's see, why don't we go ahead and get started with our stamping. And the first thing is using our Stamparatus. So you're gonna wonder, how did I get that so perfectly round in there? And that is because my trusty Stamparatus, la la, love, love, love. And that is the tool that has helped me accomplish a perfect round circle and it is just amazing super simple please don't be intimidated because once I show you this you are going to go in hog heaven and you're going to be crafting like crazy because you can definitely make multiples of these in a short amount of time you might think that this is you know something that is going to take a long long time but I don't have that long, long time to share this with you, so I'm gonna to prove to you how easy it is. So with a photopolymer stamp set, you need the foam padding that, um, is, uh, that comes with the tool, and then you're gonna need a piece of the grid paper that is suited for our Stamparatus, all right? And I'm using the Imperial side, there are metrics on the opposite side that you know anybody who is you know watching today from the UK or Germany or whoever uses Imperial I think Canada does as well you're going to be able to follow along with this as well because your paper also has Imperial on this side as well so hopefully this will work so what I did first of all is I'm going to need a circle a post-it note circle that I have die cut out already all right and again I chose the circle that fits that die in this quadrant of the dies and I'll share with you in a moment why we're going to need that so I'm going to set that aside for now but I need to find my center because I chose an off um, an odd number for a square three and three quarters it does not match up evenly with the grids here so what I had done is set it up you know I just chose a quadrant you know and I went with the bold lines and chose this as my first and foremost all right and actually this should be number one and uh, I think this is number two. So I numbered these in the order that I had started stamping. All right, so I set my main layer down and then I decided where my center was and I know my center is right here and right there and to help me distinguish that I chose a I had a piece of cardstock that I had whoops I cannot use that because that's just gonna grab um, I'll use this piece of paper so this was my center and I'm going to position this put my magnets so it doesn't move on me anymore and I needed my sticky note to plant in the center because I needed this void in through here. So if you were to peel this off, it'll be white in there. And I'm going to fold this in half 
and then I'm going to fold it in half again because that gives me my center of my circle that is going to align with the center of my cardstock. All right, so my center is here, and then I'm going to use another piece for my center here, and I'm going to put my point right in the center there. See where I'm going with this? And so that sticky note is the location of the center of my piece of cardstock. Now, just to make certain that I'm not way off, I can measure this. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I need a plastic ruler. Let's see if I can do this. So it should be about an inch. Whoop. Okay. We'll get the plastic one out because that's going to just... Now I don't have that solely in the center. And let's see if I can... So that is there. And then use this. There we go. Okay. So that is my center of my sticky note. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my magnets down. And my image, what I had done originally, was set it up so that this point came to the solid right here. And then, let's see, I think I'm going to have to, yeah, that should work to where once I start rotating this, everything's going to work. But I wanted to put it into place so that I'm not going over my cardstock. And I will not be inking up this entire image because I wanted this area to be null and void of any ink. But because my image is longer than the dimension of my circle, I don't need to be inking up that entire image. So why don't we get started with this part, and I'm going to go ahead and get my stamp set under here so I have a nice even layer to work with. And I'm going to bring out my shaded spruce. I already have everything layered, and I'm going to go ahead and ink up a good chunk of my image and stamp. All right, so there's my first one. Now you're gonna move your magnets and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and get it right back in the area that I need it because I have to stay within my little, and I went ahead and put little notches that border my paper so I knew exactly where I needed to be for my next stamping uh, stage. All right, so I'm going to do another 45, and you're going to keep doing this until you get all four sides. And again, I'm not inking up my entire image because I don't want it overstepping the circle that I have lined up for my center. All right, now that ink up. So now we have a four-way, right? So my next one was to do a slight turn that would also be centered. And again, I did the same sort of depicting of my measurement as I did the first time around. Go ahead and ink up and redo again. Now because I have all of my little tick marks already done, I could, if I wanted, go to this part and just do the whole circle at one time instead of doing a 45 degree shift, which I think is what I'm gonna do. So that it'll give you a sense of it being filled in a little bit faster. 
So I, this would have been my stage four. That's why I have number four posted there. All right. So I'm hoping everybody is doing well and enjoying this unusually nice weather. It is really, oh my gosh, it was super cold this morning. Um, it's supposed to be in, I think, the 60s today, but I'll take it because I am definitely not ready for winter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and you want to make certain that you're squared off with your tick marks so that you're not, um, if your image would happen to go off the page. So I'm just inking up. So now I've already done this one. So now I can go this direction because I don't need to re-ink the center that I've already done once. And so the, the tedious part is depicting your center and then shifting to fill the centers as you rotate your main focal point. But after you've got it set up, then you can mass produce like no other. This will go really, really fast. It, um, it doesn't take much effort at all, just moving your magnets and rotating your cardstock. And again, with the Stamparatus, if you don't get your image fully inked the first time, you're safe and can re-ink it and um, be good to go to shift your image around again. So, almost, oh boy, that would have been bad. I need to move my magnets further apart. Oh, I don't need that one. See, this is, I've already done this square, so I needed to shift to this one. I have been, oh my gosh, I have been so blessed with receiving so many lovely cards from uh, many stampers <laughs> from all over. And I know that several of you watch my card demonstrations. So I'm hoping to find a moment later this week to share them with you because they are beautiful. So yeah, I just got a bundle. Oh my gosh, I don't know how she did it, but she was able to put three cards in one envelope. And she did it, oh my gosh, I had mentioned how my mother-in-law loves owls. And uh, she and some friends had gotten together and were stamping their happy lives and yeah, it was so, so cool. So I'm anxious to get together with my mother-in-law and share those with her. So thank you, thank you so much, Clarine. I got them. Um, I think it was Saturday they came. They showed up. So, But I'll share all of the great creations with everyone at a uh, later date this week. All right, so here we go. We have it all done. And so look at how fun that... Uh, center is you know if you didn't use a post-it note you would have to use something to adhere this part to stay in place so it didn't move as you're rotating but once you remove it then you have this nice hollowed area and I mean that went really fast right and you can use this again you know as much as your sticky note you would redo it on the next uh, piece that you are wanting to stamp if you are wanting to mass produce so you've already got all of the measurements down and uh, the depiction of where your image is going to be stamping next. So, so from here, we are going to start assembling our card. All right, so I have my card base, Sahara Sand. And this is, you know, Sahara Sand is one of those colors that Oh, I forgot my bone folder. Um, that I tend to, I find myself using it more in the winter time. I don't know why, but it just kind of struck me last night as I was putting this together that I do more of this um, 
in the winter time. I use that color more in the in the winter time. So I'm going to go ahead and mat my layer here onto my cherry cobbler layer. And it's a square, so it should fit evenly no matter which direction I put it on. I just love that. Isn't that so fun? Because you could, you know, instead of um, this center piece that I put on there, you could definitely uh, stamp right in the center of there, whether it's, you know, another sentiment that would fit in that space. And then you could always make your circle bigger or smaller, depending on what your wish is. It's just that you want to make certain that you don't ink more of this particular image uh, than you need because, you know, it could start pointing, uh, you know, the inked bottom of that image would start hitting the opposite. So you want to make certain that you have a nice clean image for uh, your center so it doesn't look like it's getting dirtied up with the bottom. But all right, so we have that part. Now I already did die cut my cherry cobbler and I'm not certain what you call these things. I'm gonna call them sprigs but I went ahead and die cut them. Normally I die cut a steel from my matted layer but this image is this particular die from the Kirby dies set. All right so I'm gonna position them where I want and kind of Get them in a offset position. And I'm just gonna hold them there using a glue dot. And I'll add that there. Cause I kinda want the, I like to have my sprigs loose and not glued directly to because I like to have that little uh, 3D effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more. I'll just catch a couple of the sprigs right there. Now, you're probably wondering where these fibers come from. Let me tell you that our linen thread that we have today is a little bit thicker than the old linen thread that we had. So it's a, a thicker fiber that actually have three intertwined together. And all I did was, if anybody is into, if you've done embroidery and your pattern calls for a single thread or a double thread, and you end up, you know, they usually come in three strands for your embroidery thread and that's what I did. I just um, undid the fibers of my linen thread to give me more dainty, more um, fine fibers than the thicker uh, version of, of the linen thread. So let me see if I can, uh, let me just cut off a snip because I want this to be about like that. So I'm gonna cut that off so I can set that aside and not have to, and see if I can get this to unravel just a little bit faster. I started doing it already to get me a good start, but I wanna keep them fairly close together to their original uh, there we go. All right. So then I just went around and then I kind of shortened this one so that they weren't all of the same height. There we go. So I did that. And then again, I held it in position with a glue dot. It kind of behaves really nice once they're, it's a, a little bit finer uh, fiber. It doesn't want to unravel near as quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and put another one in there. 
kind of hold it in place. All right, and then that's going to be tucked underneath there with my scalloped champagne circle. All right, it's going to go under there. I might, I'm going to put another glue dot there to kind of help me keep it um, more together. I, I don't want it to be, oh, my thread is, I have my little, there we go, baker's twine that keeps this from unrolling. Otherwise, you know, it's like a camera film that it would fly all over. And I want to make certain I stay within my circle. So now to put this on with dimensionals, since I know where my boundary is, I can just put my dimensionals where I need them and they won't show through. I don't have to worry about positioning them here and then trying to avoid all of this uh, buildup of um, fibers and cardstock. I can just do like that. And I'll put one in there and remove these because if I were to put dimension, oops, put dimensionals on these fibers, it just kind of puffs up um, this layer. It would kind of make a kitty wampus a little higher than what I need. And then I'll just center it over that voided area like that. Yay! All right, now our sentiment. And it is done in cherry cobbler. We're doing the thinking of you at Christmas time. Um, I know a number of people are changing their rule of thumb of not decorating for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. More and more, I'm finding people are, they're breaking down. They're wanting some happy in their home and already decorating for Christmas. My daughters are one of them. <laughs> it's like, they sent me pictures of what they've already been doing. All right, so we're gonna go like that. And I just love, love, love this font. It is, I wish I had handwriting <laughs> like this. Look how pretty that is. I'm kind of a um, half cursive, half print person, but oh my gosh, I just love, I wish I could write like that. I just love, love, love. So how I got my curve, what helped me get this um, very simply without having to worry about um, being off or, or, I don't know, just kind of making certain I'm right on the mark. I used my curve, this particular one, because it had a straight edge on there, and I just used my pencil to kind of trace where I needed to go, and I just went so far, and then I did the same thing up here give myself you know, a little guidance on uh, positioning and like that. And then I kind of went like this to fill in the rest of it. Because then you can use your eraser to remove all of the pencil lines. So if you are wanting you know, a nice uniform curve because this one didn't, now with photopolymer, you can adjust it on here. If I wanted to make this straight, I could lift this up and position it so it's more straight, right? So it, you know, I, I could curve it to however I want. You know, if I wanted it more curved, I could do that. So photopolymer really allows you some extra playing room to adjust to whatever position you have. Then I just took my snips and cut along my pencil line. And I think I'm gonna go beyond my pencil line on that section and 
come around here and trim off the side. All right, yay! And then I'll come in with my little eraser and remove those markings and no one is gonna know that I cheated. Right? How, how cool is that? A nice little cheating tip. And, you know, remove all the eraser marks and there you have it. So now I want to rest this across the center, but I wanna give some support here. So I know I'm gonna need dimensionals on the ends right here. So I'm gonna use my little halvies that I have right here. Put a half there and a half there. Now it could have been wide enough for a full one, but I didn't want to take that chance and have to re, you know, peel it off. But I do want to add some adhesive support in the middle. I don't need a whole lot, but foil um, tends to need a little bit of uh, adhesive, like a liquid to keep it from moving around. And then you just position it in the center tack down that and voila so we've got that part next up we are going to adorn it with these pearls so we have our traditional basic pearls that are all kind of a cream white color but I wanted some cherry cobbler so I took my dark cherry cobbler stamp and blend and just simply colored the pearl I'm going to go around all the edges and this dry is really quick too. I was surprised. I was afraid that if I were to touch with my finger that um, it would kind of rub off, but it doesn't. And then like that. And just, you don't have to press, you know, just use the, I use the brush in. You could probably use the, um, the blunt end. You know, that would work too if I wanted to color this one, but it doesn't color it as solidly. It's more of a pencil line, so let me finish this one while I have it. Um, but it just really hugs around the curves nicely, like that. Yay! So now we can position these across my um, wreath that I have made here. And I'm gonna try and intermix these among the branches that I've created. And going here. And I kind of found myself going every other one to really make it an even um, distribution of the pearls. And, and I decided, you know, not to go all in a row I, I wanted to give it a little bit of variety and kind of go in and out and you know, to kind of balance it out with your eyeballs a little bit. And then I'm gonna go here. And the take your pick tool is awesome for doing this. And that was another reason why I chose the take your pick tool because I was afraid that if I pick these up with my fingers, one, my fingers are fairly fat and uh, wouldn't be able to position these exactly where I wanted them. And this tool just helps me finish that off. And there we go. Yay! How quick was that? That was pretty quick, right? So, what do you think? You'll have to tell me um, what you think from the original. Oh, hey, Pam. You should remember this one. <laughs> we did this one in class. So, um, yeah, so we've kind of shrunk it. We've changed the colors um, as far as the green is concerned. And then back then I used uh, circle dots. I, they were punches uh, that we used for the berries. But here we're going to use the pearls that were colored using our cherry dark. I used the dark stamp and blend. So, but I just love, love, love. So if you're needing any supplies, if you're interested, I am giving, um, I give out a gift of free uh, supplies for cards. Just use this host code right there. And then I will be sending out the supplies for that card kit. But 
yeah, hopefully you enjoy that. Let's flip us around and maybe turn the lights down a little bit, but I don't know, what do you think? Really easy, it is super, super easy. Like I said, once you get your pattern of the rotation of your primary uh, focal point, the rest is just magic. You know, you can whip it in there and and have them done in no time at all. Now this can be done on your regular A2 size. You don't have to always work with squares. Maybe you just want a half of a wreath showing, um, you know, on the top and then a bottom with the sentiment going across. So, you know, play around with it. Uh, it doesn't have to be a square. It does not have to be a square card, but, um, but in this case, this one's beautiful, I think so. I hope you enjoy this presentation, this demonstration using the Curvy Christmas stamp set. Uh, the bundle, the whole variety is just amazing and so much fun to play with. And I'm really loving this shaded spruce and cherry cobbler and the Sahara sand. It's just a nice, modern, clean, uh, crisp, uh, look. I just love those uh, colors together. So I hope you get time to stamp your dreams, get those images, those ideas, and uh, get it out on cardstock and stamp your to your heart's content. And I will see you next Sunday. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Lori Mueller with StampinDreams.com and I have a passion for paper crafting. Love it. Talk to you later. Bye.